Hello and welcome everyone to a new Heroes of Mana Magic 3 tier list video. In this one, we are going over every single wizard in the game. And wizards are actually a pretty strong class. They do a lot of things right, but they're still not up there. They are pretty good supports, and some of them can actually make for a pretty good main in templates where your main doesn't usually go like super late game, because by that point, interference is king, and the um, wizards cannot roll it, so they're kind of in the... Um, they're kind of behind in that kind of way. So, let's go over them. First off is we have Ain. Ain is a Wisdom Scholar hero that starts off with a 350 gold specialty as well, and she's actually a pretty decent hero. Um... Basically, when you're starting off tower, usually you actually don't really pick a hero in order to main him, because your main is usually going to be a hero from a different faction, meaning that you basically select like a secondary starting bonus on tower instead. And having a scholar hero that can collect and distribute spells as well as a 350 gold um, income right off the get-go of the game is actually usually pretty good. And yeah, not bad whatsoever. And because of this, she ends up being a pretty good support and one of the heroes that are that you want to get like a few levels on. She's gonna be able to share your resurrection from Jedi or like Meteor Shower from Demer. She can collect not only beginning spells, but with a little bit of investment, she can distribute like all sorts of spells like enemy dead and so on. Um, really solid hero, pretty good. I like her. She's actually usually my pick for tower gameplay. <clears throat> so next up is we have Astral. Now, Astral actually has quite a bit of value. Um, he starts off with Advanced Wisdom. He is the Hypnotize Specialist and starts off with Hypnotize in the spellbook. Now, Hypnotize doesn't matter. It's not very useful. The special doesn't, doesn't really do much and it's not really that relevant. But Astral is still a really good hero. Let me try and explain why. Um, whenever you have a hero with only one skill, um, that means that you can actually max that skill and another skill that you receive by level 5. And that other skill that you're going to be maxing on Astral is going to be a school of magic that you're going to be rolling on level 3. So your level 2 is going to be Expert Wisdom, and your level 3 is going to be a new skill at random and a school of magic. Most usually you will pick the school of magic and you will have it at Expert level by level 5. And that is amazing! Having the access the uh, expert magic at level 5 is amazing, almost no matter what school of magic. Or if you have a uh, slow shield stone skin, for air, of course you have haste, uh, for fire, curse, for water, bless. So basically you can find a use for this guy, almost no matter what. And he can build into a really solid main. Um, at least for like the uh, early and mid game, and he can also build into a really good support or a side hero. So actually, I really like him. He is usually a very preferred hero in mirror matches as well. Um, next up is we have Syra. Syra is the diplomat of the tower faction. She has wisdom and diplomacy at the start of the game. She also actually has one of the better specialties for uh, with, uh, for tower faction. She has the haste specialty. And uh, that's a really, really good specialty. You get haste immediately into the in the spellbook, and also you're gonna be having um, really, really fast units uh, early into the game. Um, your tier one and tier two units actually get free extra speed. So if you were to expert haste your gargoyles, they would be getting eight speed, and on snow that would put them at sixteen speed. Gargoyles. <laughs> They're all uh, wizards roll for image like all the time, so. You can actually pretty reliably have that those kind of speeds on your units, and that's actually really, really good. Of course, she's a diplomacy hero, so if you're uh, playing where diplomacy is going to be relevant, then Cyrus is actually a really good hero that you want to be investing on. Now, however, if the diplomacy is not really relevant in your match, maybe you're playing a, a template where you can't really support that kind of cash, or maybe the template is like too fast, like a Jeebus Cross, where you can't really build yourself up to that kind of level, the final fight happens before usually. In those kind of cases, Sara is bad, but when she's good, she's actually pretty good. I would put her in B tier. I still like Astral more, because Expert Match by level 5 is like... real great. Both for fast maps, for when you, you know, you want to get tempo out, and for slow maps, where you actually don't get that much experience. Works both ways. Um, speaking of great heroes, we have Dermith. Um, Dermith is the Fortune Specialist, and um, with Fortune in the spellbook. Now, once again, the specialty doesn't really matter. 
like it does nothing and it's okay for it to do nothing however uh, because the hero is like a really really good template for a great support um wizards have a lot of knowledge and knowledge is exactly what you want for a support hero uh, because you usually don't really invest a lot into them, and then being able to actually cast the control spells that you'll be giving them is really a huge deal. Now, on top of having a lot of good knowledge, Dermot takes it a step further, and she actually starts off with intelligence as well. So wisdom intelligence, really good skills for a side hero, and also good um, starting uh, primary skills, and primary skill growth as well. Um, this ends up making for a really, really solid package for a hero. And I would put her at least in B tier. High B tier. <clears throat> Next up is we have Drakan. Now, this guy is a campaign hero. You probably know him. He has the Enchanter specialty. And he's able to make any wizard or monk into upgraded or non upgraded into an Enchanter. And an Enchanter, by the way, is classified as a tier 6 unit. Now, he doesn't have the HP of a tier 6 unit, but they're great. They're awesome. Normally, penalty. Um, lots of damage, uh, of course, the group spellcasting and so on. Um, Draken is absolutely nuts, and honestly, good, thank god he's only a computer hero. He would ruin everything uh, with his immense power. He is the best, both in terms of looks, in terms of gameplay, and yeah, this guy's amazing. He's generally not available for online play, however, there are templates that actually have him and allow him. For example, there is the Veshran Cross that we sometimes play in the free-for-all format. In there, you can actually get him, and when you do, it's got a bit of fun. <laughs> it's got a bit of fun. But then again, eh, when we play in that kind of format, we have everything that's ridiculous available, like free joiners, um, Cloak of the Undead King, Horn of the Abyss, um, you know, we have, like, everything available. So Draken, in that kind of setting, actually fits in pretty well. <clears throat> Next up is we have Halen. Halen is the mysticism specialist. He starts off with stone skin in the spellbook, which is, okay, it's a usable spell. Something that you can actually just cast and, you know, get some value off of it, potentially. And then, now, mysticism used to be useless up until the latest uh, Hoda patch, which buffed mysticism from 1 to 3 extra mana to... 5, 10, 15. Wow. That's really good. Um, that doesn't make the hero good because mysticism is still, like, um, as a design, not really the kind of uh, skill that you actually want on your um, good heroes. However, for a bad hero, <clears throat> or, you know, a side hero that's just going to be taking a fight here and there, having some extra mana to fuel him is pretty nice. I would say, see, he is C tier. Then, next up is we have Serena. Ah, another Eagle Eye hero. She is the Eagle Eye Specialist. She starts off with Wisdom Eagle Eye. Uh, dispel in the spellbook, so her spellbook is useless. Her specialty is useless. Her starting skills are useless. She doesn't roll for really that good of... Um, that good things as a wizard. She's not really top class. So, she's not carried by anything. She, like, no specialty. No. No, 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 no. Everything about her just screams absolutely horrible. Irredeemable hero. Um, the best use for her is to put her on a fast unit and let her collect some gold piles and resource piles. Now then, the fan favorite Solmir. This hero is the Chain Lightning Specialist, as you all know. And um, everybody remembering remembering how they used to play the game 15 years ago he, um, are like, Hey, I know this dude. I picked him all the time. He's apps people. And indeed he does. What a great hero. Um, I don't really like him that much as, um, as a main because he requires quite a bit of an investment. And uh, I usually try to invest into my heroes more so than um, mage ones. But this guy can do a lot. He can take that first big fight for you. Um, he can take on ranged creatures pretty early for, I mean, especially when, uh, since the uh, Towers of Faction that usually cannot do that normally. And he is made by many, many people. Honestly, I've, I've kind of seen so many good people, like top tier players, like top 10 players, uh, play him uh, very, very willingly. And I'm changing my opinion on him as, um, you know, I'm accepting him as an actually really good viable hero. Not just, you know, a meme that we remember and used to love, like Loinus. Solomir is actually pretty legit, pretty good. He rolls for air magic all the time, which just fits him pretty well. Then he rolls for earth magic after, pretty consistently. He's a great hero, great package. 
The only downside is the fact that he starts off with sorcery. Sorcery is not really a desirable skill, it doesn't do much at all. But um the the awesomeness of Solmir kinda makes up for it. He is a tier. Mm. And next up is we have Theodorus. Um he's a magic specialist. You don't usually build magi on the on this faction, even if you were. The specialty doesn't really do that much for them. He starts off with um Wisdom and Ballistics, and honestly, Ballistics can be pretty good on a mage, specifically, when you want to hit and run your opponent, because if you go into a battle and you have Ballistics and the opponent doesn't have artillery, you're going to be having the first cast, and using the first cast can, you know, harass the opponent by casting something like, um, let's say, Implosion, Armageddon, you know, whatever damaging spell you have, even maybe a Lightning Bolt, good enough. And yeah, that could be pretty potent, however... Um, building this guy early on for the potential of him sometime down the line, um, poking at your opponent a little bit, that's a way too far sh far fetched of a dream for me. I would rather build a good hero into ballistics, uh, rather than a ballistics hero into a good one. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense to me. Uh, because of this, despite this uh, very dreamy scenario, he is D tier. So, yeah. Uh, Wizards are kind of all over the place. Um, despite not being very exceptional or that good, they end up be still being really relevant. And you see a lot of wizards around being used um, in very different ways. Um, sometimes um, in the Dare Myth as a main even. Sometimes they see actual support, you know. They're pretty well versed class and I do like them. So, yeah. I go, hope you guys enjoyed. Till next time.